Le Monarch is a powerful combat bow, which has been in the game since Forsaken, but it's now coming to its own in Season of the Lost. And rather than go through a complex quest to get it, this is now much easier to get. Plus, it seems to be really popular in PvE and PvP, especially Trials, given the state of bows this season. Well, today, I'm going to go through all the steps on how to get Le Monarch, plus check out the stats too. Well, if you're new around here or find this useful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest Destiny 2 content and turn on notifications by hitting that bell. But before we get into how to get the bow, let's check out Le Monarch. So Le Monarch is an exotic energy bow with some really, really deadly perks. So first of all, we've got poison arrows. So arrows fired quickly after a full draw become poison arrows. And precision hits with poison arrows spread poison to nearby enemies. Then we've got Snapshot Sight, so we know this one is faster time to aim down sights. And looking at the stats for the bow, we've got 76 for impact, 81 for accuracy, 51 for stability, 59 for handling, 46 for reload speed, and we've got a draw time of 684. I definitely have been noticing this more in PvP. I've seen it loads in Trials of Osiris. I even think I saw Mr. Fruit playing with it in Trials. So if you want an endorsement, well, there it is. Well, next up, let's have a look at how to get Le Monarch in Destiny 2. So to get this one, you can buy it from the exotic kiosk in the tower. You can find that next to the vault, and it's called the Monument to Lost Lights. By well, the time of making the guide, you do require the Forsaken expansion to be able to buy this bow and all the other exotics from Forsaken. So Le Monarch is going to cost you one exotic cipher, 125,000 glimmer, 200 dustlight shards, and one ascendant shard. So I'm going to go through how to get all of those materials now. So you can get an exotic cipher from the Season Pass, or you can complete the quest from Xur, and he's around from Friday until recent on Tuesday. I do a guide on Xur's location each week, so make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell to never miss an update. Also, Glimmer can be acquired from pretty much any activity, so Strikes, Gambit, Crucible, Public Events, all that kind of good stuff. And you can also go to Spider as well and trade in materials for Glimmer, but don't trade in your Dustlight Shards for Glimmer as you're going to need those for Le Monarch. Well, for the Ascendant Shards, you can purchase these from Banshee44 in the tower, or you can get them from high-level Nightfalls as random drops from the final chest. And finally, you've got the Dustlight Shards, and this is a little bit more in-depth, so I'm going to get into how to farm Dustlight Shards next. Well, next up, let's have a look at how to farm Dustlight Shards in Destiny 2. So Dustlight Shards are the planetary material found on the EDZ, and there's a couple of ways to get them. But before you head down to the EDZ, you want to prepare. And in particular, you want to have a look at your ghost shell. So you've got a mod on there called Wombo Detector. And that'll help you detect caches and resources within a 50 meter range. So put this on your ghost before you go down to the EDZ. So it's really going to come in handy to try and find those dust light shards. Whether they're in chests or they're on the floor. It's just going to help you overall. So put on that mod. So once you've done this, head down to the EDZ. And there are a few farming methods we're going to combine here. So... First of all, pick up the bounties from Devron K. He's in his church tower in Trossland. So go up there and pick up the bounties. And then the bounties are going to reward you with a bunch of Dustlight Shards. And they're quite easy too. So just get super kills, pick up some orbs, get grenade kills, things like that. Quite easy stuff. So quite easy to get Dustlight Shards through the bounties. Next, you can also find the caches hidden around in the EDZ. And you've got to see these on your map. And they're going to reward you with Dustlight Shards also. Also, your mod with Wombo Detector is going to help you find them on the ground. And also, talking about on the ground, you've got the Dustlight Shards there just literally growing out of the ground. Or you can walk around and pick them up and your ghost is going to help you find those as well. So, loads of places to get Dustlight Shards. It's also worth checking out Spider on the Tangled Shore, as he may be selling or trading Dustlight Shards. And his inventory rotates daily, so it is always worth checking in. So, if you are missing some materials... Go and check him with Spider and see what he's got. But do be careful with Spider, though. So sometimes he has materials like Dustlight Shards sold for one legendary shard. That is what you want. Or sometimes he's going to sell it for 5,000 Glimmer. I wouldn't pick it up for 5,000 Glimmer, as that is going to be a waste of your Glimmer, unless you've got millions and millions and millions of Glimmer. So Spider just really wants to take all of your Glimmer and fleece you for everything that you've got. So that is about it for the materials. So once you've collected all the materials, head back to the tower Go back to the Monument to Lost Lights, and then you can pick up Le Monarch. And congratulations, you've now got one of the deadliest bows in the game. Well, next up, let's have a look at some synergy with exotic armor. So, so for the Hunters, we've got the Oathkeeper Gauntlets, and these are really, really good, and they work really well with Le Monarch. So this comes with Adamantine Brace, 
So Bose Charge can be held indefinitely, and then you've got a mobility enhancement, standard increased mobility. But if you equip the Hunter Exotic Oathkeeper, that causes the window to fire a poison arrow to last indefinitely instead of a few seconds. So really, really nice synergy here. A little bit like Thorn and Necrotic Grip, although not quite as effective. There's a little synergy here, but I don't think it is a must-have. I think the synergy has come a long way over the last three years since Forsaken. So if you are a Titan or a Warlock, I wouldn't worry too much about the Oathkeeper, but if you're a Hunter and you happen to have these in your vault like I did, then I would recommend getting them out of the vault and trying them with Le Monarch. Well, next up, let's have a look at a little bit of history with Le Monarch. So previous to being able to buy Le Monarch from the exotic kiosk in the tower, Le Monarch could be acquired from Valandra, his an army, and go fan of forges when forging a Radiant Gold Frame. And this was during the Black Armour expansion, and this was during the first season of Forsaken. It was really, really good. So Forsaken probably goes down as the best expansion in Destiny 2, just given the amount of content, all those exotic weapons. There's loads and loads of stuff, and the Black Armoury was really, really good. So Radiant Frames could only be bought for Ballistic Logs, and that gave players six chances in total of acquiring the Monarch and Jotun each week, and he had two for each character. So with the release of Shadowkeep, players would instead complete a quest that required defeating Fallen with Bows and forging the ten Radiant Gold Frames, making for a five-a-week guaranteed acquisition on an account. But thankfully, now it's much easier to get the bow from the Monuments to Lost Lights in the tower. So I think the only tricky thing really is going out and getting those materials, but hopefully with these tips and this guide that I've given you today, it should be nice and fast. Well, finally today, we're going to have a look at the Le Monarch lore. So loads of really interesting story bits and pieces in the game, although they are sometimes buried in the lore. Although over the last few seasons, they have been making their way out in-game, in engine as well. And during Beyond Light, they've been doing those really nice animated sequences too. So I think the law has come a long way. Even since Forsaken three years ago, I think Shadowkeep really stepped it up. And then Beyond Light really just has knocked it out the park when it comes to lore. So anyway, we've got Le Monarch lore, Wings Flutter, Beauty Distracts, Poison Injects, and the Butterfly's Curse extends to your enemies, a short life shortened further by your hand. And that one comes from Ada 1. We sit together and stare out into the distance and the mountains that stretch towards the heavens. There are still vibrant parts of the world. We must not forget them. To fill her mind with all this is to make her human, to connect her to the world before. Nearby, a flutter of butterflies seek their next batch of sustenance, knowing not what the world around them has become. She watches them, they are new to her. A wayward butterfly from the flutter lands on her arm. She looks at it, and then to me, Le Monarch, she says. I nod, and I attempt to smile. I watch her. Somehow she reminds me of it. Beautiful and dangerous all at once. Sadness washes over me. I reach out and rub her back, a fleeting moment of comfort for us both, as the feel of her cold body against my hand causes me to pull away. For a moment, I forgot what she was. There was an awkward silence, and I steal another glance at her, simultaneously frightened of and in awe of who and what she has become. A product of my own twisted ambition and desperation, the monarch flies away, unlikely to be seen again. Well, as always, really, really good stuff there from the lore. Really touching story, too. But let me know down in the comments what you think of the La Monarch. Let me know what game mode you're using it in, and do you take it into Trials of Osiris? Well, that is it for this guide on how to get Le Monarch after the Beyond Light update in Destiny 2. And as always, thank you so much for watching. For more Destiny 2 content like this, hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe to This Week in Video Games. If you want to join the community, check out the Discord link in the description, or you can follow me on Twitter at TWIVG Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, liking and sharing the video would really help me out. Otherwise, check out the other videos on the channel. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.